Hello and welcome to another jungle tutorial. In this video we are going to revisit jungle clear efficiency, a video I did last year at the end of season 7 and the beginning of season 8, but obviously a lot of things have changed about the jungle since then, and whether you like them or not, or whether you've switched roles, it's still important to understand and of course the impact that it can have on the game. Now in the previous video we looked at different jungle routes that you can get level 3 and look to control scuttles and ganks. I gave you 5 different ways that have different approaches and if you're curious about that go and watch that video but this video is more about depending on that choice that you make how can you be efficient about how you make that clear and then specifically how you can impact the enemy jungler who hasn't chosen to clear efficiently and actually finds himself being predictable and quite far behind to the point that you can control the early game even without that much kill pressure. So in this game I was Evelyn, the enemy was Gragas, and we both started on the bottom side which means we both received a leash from our bottom lane. Now as Evelyn of course you, <laughs> your attacks are basically non-existent and it's very important that you kite around and then lead off to the next camp with your Q. Gragas on the other hand decides to tank a bit more than he usually would and doesn't choose to smite. Now if you remember according to the clear efficiency video last time, I said not using your smite on that first camp if you're gonna get pretty low is quite dangerous. Now if I was a more aggressive jungler, say I was Graves here, I would have definitely gone and contested this red and it would have been a free kill for me. So his laziness here, I'm saying I'm gonna save my smite and use it later, really doesn't help. In addition to the fact if you look at me taking the raptors and him taking the wolves, he isn't really kiting them much. He's moving back and forth but he's not kiting the camps. Between the camps attack, he's not pulling them out so that they're actually delayed. He's just sort of going backwards when they don't attack and going back into them when they do attack and that causes him to take way more damage than he probably should. In Evelyn's case you can see that I've charmed the big raptor, I'm kiting around in a circle, I'm getting the full AoE on my Q and I'm maximizing the talisman's ability to regenerate my health and mana. And now this is where things get a little bit hysterical. I do my basic Evelyn route which I explained in the last video. I go red into raptors for the AoE then down and take the topside scuttle. I like that to protect me against any possible invades, especially if my lane is done of priority, as well as the fact that it gives a chance for mana to catch up before I go and take my second buff. Gragas, on the other hand, goes straight to his red, and again, he is failing all the criteria that I outlined in the previous jungle clear efficiency video. He's not kiting his camps efficiently, he's really standing in the spot and moving back and forth, that's not kiting. Kiting is actually forcing the camp to come out with you and delaying the amount of attacks it can get per second while you time it accordingly with your CC and your own damage. He's just kind of sitting there and face tanking it. It's very lazy and he's using all his HP from it. And even though he smites, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. Now on Evelyn's case, you can see I'm full HP from the scuttle, I'm kiting the blue around sufficiently, I still have my smite which I use a little bit sooner than you would just to maximize the heal I can get from it. And then off I go. Whereas Gracchus decides he wants to do his raptor camp and, <laughs> well, you know, he has to flash out or get executed. And that's all a consequence of being lazy at each of his three buffs that he cleared. He saved the smite when he shouldn't have. He's not kiting incorrectly, he's just looking like he's kiting. He's face tanking and he has no consideration for invades. He hasn't brought the red buff into the bush on the side. What if I was Graves and I just walked in or Zin? And now, well, the drunk man is forced to go back to base. You know, I'm actually amazed he didn't die. I decide to go and venture into his jungle knowing that I am full HP and I probably have the advantage. And guess what, I find the raptors there, for some reason some baby ones are dead. And I actually steal that away and leave one more baby behind so he still gets punished for his own mistake. However, he doesn't get that XP from the big raptor. And I actually ping missing or sort of in confusion because I don't really understand what happened to him. Now when I watched the replay I had a good laugh to myself but in game I'm sort of curious as to what led to the situation. Now because jungle clear efficiency isn't just about your microing of the camps in that first few levels, it's also about the impact of that and how your pathing affects the rest of the game. So given the respawn timers and camps and the fact that Gragas had left his raptors up, I assumed he would go down to the bottom side. I retreat back into my jungle, I take my gromp, I take my wolves and at the same time Gragas is taking his gromp opposite on the other side of the map. I actually ping this out to my team approximately to when I think he should be in the river. I'm a little off but at least that awareness is raised and I've told my team in chat this is where he is. And this is where the prediction comes in because of Gragas' lack of clear efficiency. Because I predicted his clear up based upon the fact that he left those particular raptors up, I actually cut him off in the mid lane. I take a path that's different to how you normally would if you're just clearing. I move into the mid lane and down into my own jungle just in case he was coming up for a gank on my Dana who's actually pushing. And I actually go ahead and take the second respawn of my raptors which is now means I'm a camp ahead of Gragas already because of my efficiency. I chose a path that allowed me to get maximum camps on that first rotation while he did a really clumsy lazy clear of just going from blue to wolves to red and then of course he almost died at his raptors. That means his respawn times are all out of whack. 
his Gromp got taken, but his wolves were respawned. Now he had to go take his raptors. Of course, he hadn't yet cleared it and I left the baby one, so now he's two camps behind effectively. So again, it's not just about your micro, it's about your decisions and order in which you do things. Following this, I think it's about time to get a gank in. My jungle is fully cleared. My red will be up in the next couple minutes. My Krugs are still up for that first clear, nice XP as well. And the fact that I know the Gragas is going to feel starved and he's going to feel forced to make a gank. And because I have evidence that he doesn't know how to path efficiently, tank efficiently, or, you know, remotely know what he apparently should be doing, I assume he's going to go into the lane, which should be the easiest for him to gank, and that's top lane. Jax is perma pushing. He's not yet six, but he will be soon. And Gragas is most likely path is to go that direction purely because their bot lane's pushing. Our mid lanes are kind of neutral and his camps on the bottom side are disjointed in the respawn time because he didn't take Wolves and Grump together, and so that means he probably won't want to come down here until his blue is respawning. Because of this, my bot lane has told me that Caitlyn has no flash. I move straight on over, I ignore my Krugs, I can come back to that. It's very easy to set up a gank with Evelyn and Rokan. Free kill. And now, because you have done everything by the book so far, and even though you haven't really ganked, you've exerted a lot of camp pressure onto the Gragas and thwarted his only attempt to gank. He is behind because of his own mistakes, but also the fact that you are punishing them. Now, because I've been tracking him accurately, there he is sitting, pink warded. He thinks he's anonymous. He thinks no one can see him, but I've pinged him out. He went straight to top and I still pinged him out exactly when you're sitting in that bush. However, his laner had to go back and because he shows to defend the minion wave against the tower, well, that's free for me. I walk on up into his jungle. I take his wolves. I tell my bot lane, I don't really want to do this dragon just yet. It's more important for me to keep starving Gragas. I take his grump as it comes up. And even though I completely whiff on the blue buff just because of fat fingers, right? And I'm not paying attention. I'm able to steal that away as Gragas comes down. I've also put a pink ward there to give me another trigger of information that I can use to extrapolate his pathing in the next few minutes. He puts a ward and he thinks, oh, I'm going to go steal her red if he stole my blue. Well, you know, I hit the plant on the way out because I saw him come. It shows him and now he definitely doesn't want to come over because he has no idea the state of wards. He doesn't know my level. He doesn't know my HP. He knows nothing about the situation and he's forced to retreat from his bot side having taken nothing even further behind. And because he only just gets level 5 on his raptor camp and he's so far behind and I've communicated his location and tracking to my team this entire game, my Diana and Jax have pushed up, gotten lane priority and gotten some vision down which is very very useful for all of us. Now I have a really bad gank on the bottom lane. I actually wanted to go for the Leona but the Rakan goes onto the Caitlyn and of course Leona stuns me and I'm not going to flash and waste spells for a kill I'm definitely not going to get. I can use that shortly in a more uh, secure situation. And Gragas, of course, sees me bot lane and thinks, hey, I'm going to go steal her camps. But because we've been tracking him and reading him like a book because of his lack of, again, sorry for using this word so much, efficiency at clearing his jungle and pathing around it, my Dan is able to collapse on him and use her level lead to gain a nice kill. And basically from here, I'm able to clear my blue side, get some ganks off on the top side to further Jax's lead. Gragas does get off something on the bottom lane, even though he shouldn't have given the information we had on hand. But... After a few kills and nice vision control and further tracking of Gragas, we conduct a blue invade at the next blue buff respawn, kill Gragas, and from there we're able to snowball nicely. And even though my team throws pretty heavily, because of our lead and because of all this pressure we've had all game, a simple team fight in the mid lane, as you'll see on screen now, allows us to ace them and push up the mid, and a few minutes later we win. So I hope you can at least respect and understand how important all these things are connected. The jungle clear efficiency video I made in December, the video I just released before this, the matchup video about how to conduct yourselves in matchups knowing what enemy champions can do so you can work around that. All of these things when you mesh them together can work to your advantage to have a really beautiful game just like this one. Even if you're not ganking and getting kills, the fact that we have mid and bot lane completely neutral, you're able to impact that by letting them focus on what they need to do to stay in the game and when you can gank and help them, it gets your team the lead while the enemy jungler is just far behind struggling to catch any XP. You're also pinging out any ganks he has that would let him get back into the game and that is absolutely invaluable. I hope you're able to learn something from this video. I know there's a little bit different structure than we've done recently but I thought this example was such a great one for looking at all of these things knitted together as well as refocusing on that clear and empire thing early game. Please leave a like, comment, share the video if you enjoyed and learned something. Please do subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and other jungle tutorials, suggest things in the comment section. Thank you all for watching, and as always, I'll see you all in the next tutorial.